In the spring, a new leader will take over the Archdiocese of Hartford, which has a flock of Catholics that stretches from the Litchfield Hills to Metro Hartford to New Haven and the shoreline. Right now, Christopher Coyne is Archbishop Coadjutor, serving alongside Archbishop Blair to learn about our state. And he was very candid when I sat down with him. And we are joined now by the new Archbishop Coadjutor. Yes. Christopher Coyne, welcome to Hartford. Welcome to Connecticut. Thank you. How does it feel to be here? It's, um, it's a lot of transition, a lot of changes. Uh, it's my third move as a bishop. So um, it's, I'm getting, I guess I'm kind of used to it. I'm hoping this is my last move. Tell me about your growing up, your journey to become a priest and an archbishop. Well, how long do you have? Um, <laughs> I grew up in a very large Irish Catholic family. I was the middle child of seven, and uh, we were very active in our parish church. I was a product of public schools, but uh, our church had a, had a great uh, community, and priests were always in and out of our house, and we were all altar servers, and my mother and father would volunteer, and so we, I was very familiar with a lot of the priests and deacons. So I went to college, worked a lot of jobs, and got through college, and then worked full time for a couple of years, and eventually uh, put in an application for the seminary. And here I am today. One of my college classmates, Father Michael Dolan, yep. told me after you were picked, he said, you know, he was a bartender. You should ask about that. <laughs> and I was a bartender too at one time. And it's an amazing job because you learn a lot about people. What kind of memories do you have from doing that job or lessons you learned that help you today? It wasn't so much um, the people across the bar or the customers. It was the people with whom I worked. Um, if, you know, you worked in a restaurant as a bartender, so you know, there's some rough, they're, they're rough and tumble people, but they also have a good heart. And a lot of them are in there, they're doing a second job, trying to make ends meet. Um, a lot of, some of them were doing drugs, you know, speed and stuff to keep going. And um, they were all heavy, so a lot of them are heavy hitters in terms of dr drugs and alcohol and all that. But, uh, and I grew up a lot in, in the five or six years that I worked there, two, time, two years full time. and. Uh, made a lot of good friends with people that I would never have um, met, different, uh, cult, different communities, different cultures. So it was a real growing experience. What are your goals for the Archdiocese of Hartford? My goals are to um, evangelize. You know, we're no longer, here in the United States, especially in the Northeast, we're no longer a church of the culture, we're no longer a church of the uh, community in the sense of, uh, you know, we have an entree into, into automatic entree in different walks of life. Uh, we're a missionary church now. People don't come to our church. They just don't walk through the doors. In fact, most people are walking out of the doors. You know, one of the things that, uh, that we've encountered over the past 20 years as a Catholic church is many Catholics have left the church, not because they've left faith, but they join other faiths. And the churches that they tend to join more than anyone else, anything else, are the mega churches. And when you ask them, why did you join the mega church? They say, because I felt welcome. What about mega churches? Do you see a need for those in the Catholic Church? Maybe a town that has four small churches, maybe have one big church? Is that something? It works, it works. I was talking to a priest recently who told me he thinks one of the problems with the Archdiocese of Hartford over the years in terms of losing parishioners is because they've closed so many churches and so many schools and people feel like they've been abandoned and they don't know where to go. They don't necessarily want to go to a new church. They like their old one. Do you foresee more church closings in the future? Yes. You do? I do. Okay. Um, we, the problem is not that the church is abandoned, that the priests have abandoned, or the archdiocese is abandoned. The, the people who used to be in the church have left the church. Now, part of it is that we've, we were complacent. We weren't kind of concerned about that until it obviously became a problem. But I think in many instances, when a church is closed, it's because there's nobody there. So who walked away? Now, I don't want to make it look like I'm blaming the laity and people that walked away, but if the numbers aren't there, you can't sustain it. You know, I always say it's like you, you get to a point when you have your family home and you just say this home that was built that, for 10 people in which 10 people once lived, it's only got one person living in it anymore. Do we really need this family home or is it time to move to a new place? How many do you think will be closing? I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I know that um, there's a number of parishes that have combined and they all have a, a huge number of buildings that there's going to have to be decisions made about which buildings are maintained and which are not. Schools, parish rectories, parish halls, and churches. And a lot of it depends on all kinds of factors. So I, I, I have no idea. I know we're going to have to close more. You know, somebody was saying recently that one of the problems is generating excitement for the Catholic Church again. And if you look back, and you and I are roughly the same generation, Pope John Paul II 
sort you know was good at like you know rallying the young people to the Catholic Church. How does the church recapture that? The excitement. I think one person at a time, as I said, one 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 uh, one family at a time, one person at a time. That um, you know the excitement of that was the, the, from the fifties through to the mid seventies. That was a that was a bubble. That was a huge increase in the amount of people in the Catholic Church in suburbia everywhere. And they were building churches left and right. But if you go back through the history of the church, that's really often that's not sustainable. And it wasn't sustainable for all kinds of reasons. And it's not just the Catholic Church that's facing these kinds of challenges. It's all of the um, established institutional churches and religions around the in the United States and in the first world. It's whether it's us, ortho, um, Orthodox, um, any of the Christian faiths, the Jewish faith, they're seeing their numbers drop too. People say, I'm spiritual, but I don't want to belong to an institutional church. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I don't quite know what that means. Do you, do you see a larger role for women in the church in the future? I do, I do. Um, women's ordination um, at this point is, is uh, in terms of the diaconate is kind of being discussed. Um, in terms of for the priesthood, it's not uh, open for discussion. It's, we've been told it's case closed, but hopefully there will be some opportunity down the road if we are, have us ordain or, or name some de deaconesses. If you had a moment with Pope Francis and he asked Archbishop, what should I change about the church? What should I do differently? What would you tell him? <laughs> I could say tough that. question. <laughs> it is tough. I'd say get it out of Italy, get it out of Rome. It's uh, you know put it maybe we need to put it someplace. It's too Roman. It's to me. It, uh, I'm I'm not and, and I'm not saying anything. I just think because it's Roman, it's it's inbred in terms of the of the culture of Rome. It's inbred in the terms of the culture of. Uh, of, the, of that community there. And he's tried and tried and tried to change the Roman ways, but you hit the Roman ways that have been part of the tradition of the church for years. That would be the first thing I'd say. Is there any way we can move out of Rome and just kind of start over with, <laughs> with a different bureaucracy? Because when you hit the, I was, I was in Italy for five years and I, you know, the, the, the town bureaucracy, this, whatever it was, the police bureaucracy, oh boy, it was tough. And it's, and you hit the same thing in the city of Rome. And to a Catholic viewer who's watching this interview, who's left the church but is thinking of coming back, what's your message to him or her? We have a place for you that you're always welcome. That when you come here, it's a non judgmental zone. That, uh, yes, sometimes our message is hard to hear because it's challenging, um, but uh, we're all on the way to salvation and, we're and we want to accompany each other on that way, growing in the life of holiness. We don't want you to stay where you are. I don't want to stay where I am. I want to grow more towards God, God but I want to walk with you and all are welcome. Archbishop Coyne, welcome to Hartford. Welcome to Connecticut. Best Thanks. of luck. Thanks. Next, he is a dad in Connecticut and a father and a trailblazer. And he's also one of the best known sportscasters in the country.